Well, Professor Clements with you as we consider discussion of uh, chapter two in the OpenStax College Physics. And some key concepts here would be displacement, some distance in a straight line and a direction, a velocity, a rate of change of position of meters per second and a direction, and an acceleration, a rate of change of the velocity and a direction. And we'll consider one-dimensional motion and both the horizontal and vertical uh, motions before we're done with this chapter. Uh, but for this particular video, focusing in on displacement, distance a little bit, and uh, vectors and scalars, um, more complicated motion would be in the real world, such as a bird flying. It's going to go left, right, up and down, um, and has a three-dimensional motion to it that we're not going to consider. In uh, this chapter, we're going to do straight line motion, one-dimensional motion. Uh, but we can consider what might ha be happening to a bird flying in a straight line, or a car, or a person walking, such as an instructor in a classroom. Um, this person starts over on the left, and they move to the right two meters. So their initial position, uh, x naught, naught is usually used for the starting position, um, is at 1.5 meters from the origin of some coordinate system. The final position here is at 3.5 meters, and we can calculate the displacement by subtracting 3.5 meters minus 1.5 meters. So that's sort of an introduction to the concept of displacement. Uh, this person must walk in a straight line, nice sober professor, and uh, then you can calculate the, the displacement. Uh, we use a coordinate system where most often x will be off to the right uh, when we do two-dimensional motion and it'll be positive off to the right and y would be positive upward. Um, so we have an example here that an object uh, starts at uh, x naught here, this position, moves three kilometers to the left. The direction of motion can be represented by a plus or minus sign. So we have minus three kilometers. And then the uh, object moves two kilometers to the right, plus two kilometers. So what do you think the displacement is? And displacement is how far we are away from the start at the final position, xf minus x naught. And you should come up with minus one kilometers. So we've got minus three kilometers to the left. We come back two kilometers. The minus three dominates. It's the larger magnitude. Um, so we're minus one kilometers for the displacement, or you could say one kilometer to the left. Most often, we'll use plus or minus sign instead of indicating to the left or to the right. So minus one kilometer. What about the distance traveled? If this is a person walking, did they only walk one kilometer? No, they walked five kilometers. So distance, we do not subtract the final position, uh, subtract the starting position from the final position. Uh, we add up all the distances, ignoring plus or minus signs in front of the distance value. So the total distance traveled, three kilometers and two kilometers, that's five kilometers. We'll use displacement much more than we refer to uh, distance traveled. Uh, so shopping trip, perhaps. Uh, person starts at the home, goes to the store that's three kilometers away. They've got a straight sidewalk. Um, so three kilometers there, three kilometers back. No curves on this sidewalk, just straight three kilometers. So the distance is six kilometers. What's the displacement? Our final position here, our initial position is here. Those values are going to be the same with uh, whatever coordinate system you're using. The position numbers at the door of the house will be the same at the start of the end. So the displacement is zero. No net change in the position, zero displacement. And I wouldn't bother putting a direction on that, but usually your displacement number will have a direction. Um, so distance the total path that's been traveled, and we'll use meters or kilometers, metric, and would include 
curving back and forth. Though the odometer of a car is giving you the distance traveled, um, it, that odometer advances whether you're driving on a straight line through central Nebraska on the interstate or if you're driving on a curve through the mountains of Colorado and the mountain passes and so forth. Um, the odometer advances just based on where the car has been traveling. So the total path traveled. Displacement, you must get into your mind, is a change in the position relative to a starting point. And the meters or kilometers is measured along a straight line from the start to the end. You, when you write down a displacement, you must include the direction from the start to the end position. You will subtract using your coordinate system, you'll subtract the starting position from the end position. Um, then the concept of scalar and vector. We'll come back to this displacement and distance in just a little bit. Um, but scalars and vectors. You do need to distinguish when you're working a problem if you have a scalar problem or vector problem. The techniques are much different in solving the problems depending if you're working with scalars or vectors. Scalars are easier in that you don't have to worry about a direction. Though well, mass is an example of a scalar. We don't say five kilograms up or five kilograms to the left. An object just has a mass of five kilograms. Uh, temperature may be changing, but one temperature value is you know, 20 degrees Celsius or 37 degrees Celsius. Um, temperature does not have a direction. Vectors have a certain size to them, a magnitude, and it has a direction. And there are many important vectors uh, that we'll be discussing here in the next chapter or two. You know, displacement is a vector, velocity is a vector, acceleration is a vector, force is a vector, momentum is a vector, and the list goes on and on. Uh, you, you need to recognize, you need to memorize whether a quantity is a scalar or a vector. It has to have a direction reported. So uh, keep that in mind. Our coordinate systems, uh, you have some flexibility. There'll be an origin where the thing being measured is has a value of zero. And we'll have plus assigned in a certain direction on the coordinate system you know, for the x-axis. Plus will be off to the right. Um, you do not have to worry a lot about the origin of the coordinate system, the zero point. In fact, we'll very often conveniently put the origin at the start of the problem. And that will allow one number to have a value of zero. You know, when we're calculating displacement, it makes things a little easier. Uh, so as an example of this, um, let's suppose we look at the labels for start and end positions of one motion measured in two coordinate systems. We're going to use two coordinate systems. And what we're going to find is that the labels of starting and ending will change, but the displacement will not change. Let's see how that happens. So an object moves from the position of one meter to the position of six meters in some coordinate system. Alongside, we have another you know, coordinate system, but its origin is to the left. So for this first coordinate system, when the object is at 1 meter, the label on the second coordinate system is 12 meters. And at the end point, 6 meters is the label in the first coordinate system, 17 meters is the label in the second coordinate system. Calculating the displacement says take our starting position, subtract it from the ending position. That's going to be plus 5 meters, or 5 meters to the right. Um, using this coordinate system numbers. But notice down here, if I take 17 and I subtract 12, again I have plus 5 meters. So the origin is not important. You can simplify problems a little bit by putting zero at the start of the problem. Um, so there we are. Um, so total distance traveled, 6 kilometers there and back. Uh, displacement is zero because we're ending at the uh, starting point. What if we take the point of view of uh, maybe it's the store is delivering groceries to the home. So we have a person starting at the store, going to the home and coming back. 
what distance does that person travel? You know, six kilometers. It's the same house, same store. What's the displacement? It's going to be zero. We're starting at the store. We're ending at the store. Uh, so the uh, origin of the coordinate system is not important. Or if you want to take the person here, let's suppose our zeros here and positive goes in this uh, direction off to the right. Uh, the person at the home would start at minus three kilometers for a position, come up to zero kilometers if here's our origin, and then go back to zero, uh, or sorry, back to minus three kilometers. Use your calculator perhaps, but uh, minus three, minus a minus three, we again end up with a displacement of zero. So it doesn't matter if the origin is here at the door of the home or if the origin is at the store. So you ought to keep thinking about that. Distance is the total uh, path that's traversed. But displacement, we have to do a subtraction. And next video, we'll do uh, speed and velocity.